Caner Universe, welcome to this segment of Caner Tip Tuesday and a warm welcome to all new Caners to the culture as well as those that are just starting your Cane at Home six week challenge number 104. Over a hundred Cane leaders certified in pandemic times alone. So we're very excited about that. We're gonna be talking about the new American Cane Boxing curriculum very soon. I am going to handle this one um, request and then we're uh, kind of going to go into that curriculum because of the demand and your interest. Thank you so much for your kind feedback on that. And that was my guarantee to you was that I would bring uh, uh, more uh, clarity to that topic and share uh, uh, that exciting uh, curriculum and portions of it and whatnot. But here today by request. One of the most important and preventive strategies that you have as a caner is what is commonly referred to out there as a figure eight. Now, there are figure eights and some instructors out there refer to it as spinning. And I always say they're spinning and then there's American cane self-defense spinning and they're not one in the same. So if you sat out there taking a look and you go, well, I don't think this is effective. I'm here to tell you that that is not American cane self-defense spinning. And that's totally fine. And those of you that are instructed and you refer to it as such, nothing wrong uh, uh, with that, but I am going to bring clarity. I know for a fact where that comes from because I was there in the formative as a pioneer in American cane self-defense and the founder um, of this particular method I know there's, again, I, I always, when we talk about the history, there's three main lines in uh, the American cane arts. And this is essentially a maneuverability skill for the cane, and then it looks like something like this. But please, it's not uh, an ACSD strategy. And l let me explain. So, first of all, we're going from doing this from the horn to the shaft, right? So that it's something, it is actually composed, a figure eight, of what we uh, recall, what we call in our power shot template at ACSD, a power shot number one and a five. So it's more along the line. So you're here a, a criminal now, and you're faced with, back off, back off, back off, right? And something that's coming at you very aggressive with loud verbal. So I wanna uh, paint the scenario here. And, uh, you put yourself in a bad time and place, uh, perhaps a, a female, right? And, and now you, uh, you find yourself that you had to, you could have pumped in gas at 3 uh, p.m., but you got a call. And, and now uh, you find yourself, uh, you went and did something else, you're catching it on the rebound, you're pumping in gas, it's late at night, and it's just you. And rather than sitting there looking at your social status, you have this tool. Uh, this is essentially, by the way, a metal pipe um, with a meat hook on the end that's legal to carry anywhere. And you, you, you're, you're here as you're pumping gas. See, this is different. And, and it's not this that you'd be doing, but it's composed. Think of a trained fighter that throws educated punches within a guard zone. That's what you have. And moving forward as well, aggressive. Now, if I'm a criminal and I'm seeing this coming at me, um, with the ability to strike high or strike low without telegraphing and a 37 and a half inch reach. Um, and, and I was coming over here and you say, listen, I don't want any trouble. And you explode into that because what, is, what you're doing is like a, again, like a fighter, you're cutting off the quote unquote ring. You're forcing me as a criminal to make a decision. And that decision is, um, do I risk moving forward, getting caught, and getting hit by this, which is essentially a bone crusher, um, and, and the loud verbals, and she's calling so much attention uh, to herself. Everybody has a phone these days, and now you're forcing me to make that decision. And it happens fast, it happens in three to five seconds. Um, do I risk getting clocked, or do I live to rob another day? And that's where the preventive component of this one strategy that has you um, without anything. So if, if you were here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch just in the, in, in, uh, the safety um, and I'm going to go to a padded drone, right? A padded drone. 
and, and uh, listen, I don't want any trouble, and I, I was here, but, but now if you would come into the picture, watch the, the, the problem that you have here. Is back off, back, right? I'm coming forward. It's not where you're stationary doing um, any type of spinning, quote, unquote, from the horn. And so we, we want to bring distinction to that. The second important component that will uh, get you out of a mess is, let's all say it together, footwork. <laughs> so I always say that footwork gets you in trouble or can get you out of trouble depending on how you do things. And tied into um, the background of this type of, of spinning or a strategy, and, I, and, and again, I want to I wanna point out that doing that, right, is... is the analogy I, I, I use is, think of a boxer who hits a speed bag, right? They train. Every world champion professional boxer has hit a speed bag, and they use it as part of their training. But you would never think that in the ring, his strategy is going to be to stand there and do this, right? You wouldn't think that, and, and so it is with this. Remember, you're moving through space, and you're moving, so your footwork, in the same way that I say that, I also say that, the majority that are training with canes today, that are teaching canes, you move in one plane. You essentially know how to move forward and back and side to side for a variation which might be ang angular. But you don't have circular, semicircular patterns that, of footwork that move in and out, right? So staying with the boxing analogy, think of John L. Sullivan back in the day, the first heavyweight champion, right? And this versus Right, a footwork that is designed to keep you out of range, hit and not get hit, if you will. Right? So here's what happens when we just go ahead and generalize and say, well, if I'm over here um, and I'm saying, listen, I don't want any trouble, the idea that because you throw in a distractor, um, you come in here and, and, and throw, boom, and then follow, just throw, 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 throw it's going to go right through, and then you, you boom, boom, and you, you're going to go ahead and get we're assuming that when something like that happens or you're going to bull rush me, even if you don't throw, have anything in your hand, you're going to bull rush me in here that I don't have the capability. Even if I move to the side, he can follow me there. And you're assuming that I don't have the capability to move and, and get to a safe place and not get hit and yet still be able to control the situation. Here's the key with the ability to escalate or de-escalate. I don't necessarily have to whack you in the head. I don't have to whack you in the head to incapacitate. And it might look like this. Are you okay with this? Okay, so um, uh, again, using the drone, drones, they don't break bones, but they can leave a mark. So thank you, Kiko, for help, helping us here today. But I don't even spin the cane if I'm here, and, I, and I'm taking it from the shaft. It's spinning from the shaft, right? You're maneuvering from the shaft and not from the horn. You have a better grip here. So that's the first dis distinction. But while I'm talking down, um, whether I've been moving or I'm not doing anything, uh, I'm going to ask them to just go ahead and, you know, the element of surprise and move in, and you'll, I think you'll get, you'll get the picture of why footwork is so, and so, you okay? Okay, and so, and so you see him doing this, and so what happened there, and I'll do it uh, slowly for you, and sorry about that, and uh, again, because it, it, it leaves, uh, it, it, you know, you are going to feel it, but when this happens, guys, there goes the shot out here, bang, where did that hit you go? Uh, the knee. The knee, right? So it hits the knee to the knee to the shin with a padded tool um, from here, and by the way, it wouldn't end there, right? I'm, I'm looking, hopefully it ends there, to incapacitate, but understand that this type of movement here, right, and these diagonal um, uh, movements forward and back and the ability to move while we do this, much like a fighter would, it not only gives you the ability to prevent back off, back off, back off in an educated way, right? Bang, 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 bang. It's not where you're coming from out here where he can see this from a mile away. You can set that down and get rid of that. But if I'm over here and, and, and now I come from the outside, he can see how he covers up or he can go ahead and, and um, just go ahead and catch it even. So he does that. Um, I, at times I've heard individuals say, yeah, I, I've seen that before and I'm willing to take a shot. I'm willing to take a shot. Well, you're not going to be taking a shot with a drone. Just keep in mind you're taking a shot with a metal pipe, right, that's coming with the intention to crush bones. <laughs> Make no mistake about that. So rather than coming out here, what this allows 
is that you don't know. And it's not stationary. Again, it's moving. Because what I don't want to give you, the criminal, is the opportunity to think and put together a strategy. Right? You don't have the time to sit there. And you've been observing me spinning before. Or, hey, I just have a bag and I think I'm going to use that or throw something at you to distract you. Well, you're dealing with an individual that's tactically trained. Right? And so we have the capability of one side or moving to the other. Right? That is called a figure eight from the shaft composed of two power shots and tied into footwork that is outside what your, what your experience has been in moving forward and, and backwards and just side to side. Very good. And by the way, guys, never to uh, make anyone wrong, but just to bring clarity to the topic. Why? Because as world leaders in uh, Kane's self-defense education, there's a lot that are coming in. And so we just want to bring clarity to that topic. Instructors, we invite you. Um, you are uh, cordially invited to reach out uh, to us, have a conversation, talk about curriculums and how we can serve our audience best because I love the fact that you're going out there with a servant's heart, putting out uh, information. Uh, we just want to make sure that we can serve our audience in the best way possible these days. And to that point, you just heard me congratulate um, those that just started the, the Cane at Home Six Week Challenge. And if you want to have a conversation and find out at no cost, go ahead and text the letters CCC to 305-745-7839. Let's talk about where you are now. So rank beginner, never picked up a cane before, but I'm attracted to the concept. It makes sense, especially in today's world. I'm an advanced instructor. I've been doing this for a while, but I want a way to be able to serve my audience uh, even at a distance, right? So. We, if we get shut down again, God um, uh, forbid, uh, then it, that's going to affect the way that we serve. Well, uh, we've been doing this for a while. And like I said, in pandemic times alone, certified over 100 cane leaders thus far. And it be begins with a simple, no-cost uh, phone call to learn how it is that we can serve you best. I'm Joe Robina for American Cane Self-Defense. Thanks for watching. Keep caning. Stay safe.